in the previous section which was called uh, the funeral of the fourth husband the wife of bath has already confessed she confessed that uh, she was already attracted to jenkin right from that very moment when even uh, the the corpse of the fourth husband wasn't even buried and the funeral was going on and this section now uh, which is called the servant becomes the fifth husband kind of continues uh, the sto her story after the funeral of the fourth husband now as uh, we know that uh, she already had her eyes on the young clerk from oxford called jenkin and uh, she also uh, gave her reasons why she was a worthy wife she was uh, still young at heart although she was 40 and the clerk was 20 well she is still young at heart she was still kind of pretty and she also was rich because now uh, she inherited the property of all the uh, all her free previous husbands so she made a good uh, wife candidate for a wife so anyone would like to marry her that's what she says and she also said that whenever i have my eyes on someone uh, i cannot withdraw and i already have a fetish for young men and because this jenkin was a young clerk from oxford uh, uh, he was uh, flirty he was uh, well bred and studied at oxford and he was a clerk he was young uh, 20 and he ha he was handsome and muscular with that fine uh, chiseled leg of his so we kind of know that it is only time before uh, wife of bath and jenkin get married and we know that jenkin was uh, eventually the wife of bath uh, fifth husband so this section continues uh, from there what should i say now save at the month's end this jolly gentle jenkin clerk my friend had wedded me full ceremoniously and to him gave i all the land in fee that ever had been given me before now wife of bath was not at all late to proceed uh, with her life after the death of her fourth husband she moves on very quickly from all her relationships and even before uh, that very month when her fourth husband died uh, at the end of that very month uh, they got married wife of bath and jenkin and they had a grand wedding she says that we had a full ceremonious marriage a grand wedding and uh, as an act of love uh, with uh, jenkin for jenkin wife of bath handed him all the property the lands the wealth uh, that she inherited from her previous marriages because she had uh, four other marriages and she married uh, old uh, rich men so that she could inherit their property after their deaths so she is she was very rich by now but she kind of make uh, a lapse in her judgment she kind of thinks for once with her heart and she gives away uh, all that property to jenkin as an act of love and this is the first mistake that she does because uh, but later i repented me full sore he never suffered me to have my way so she understand that she very soon regrets this decision of giving away all her property because she understands that with my with her property her freedom was also now gone now she realized that jenkin was so dominating so domineering a husband that he never allowed a uh, wife of bath to do anything that she wanted and we understand from this section that financial freedom that she had up till now because she inherited the property of her previous four hus husbands that was her core strength and from that financial freedom she got the uh, liberty of actions and choices that she had that she enjoyed so once that financial freedom was gone because uh, she transferred all her property to her husband uh, as an act of love and now her husband shows uh, her his real face and this is quite ironical uh, and quite a paradox from that previous uh, uh from the previous saying from that previous uh theme that uh the women 
they hide all their faults till they are married uh, and the moment they are married they start to show their true colors this was uh, uh, this was a theme in the previous section so a kind of a, the kind of the opposite happens here uh, the, i think that section was called the shrews proverb uh, so a kind of the opposite happens uh, in this section because uh, Jenkin was thought to be a very well bred educated from oxford clerk a gentleman and a loving husband a loving man a young loving man but once they were married jenkin this kind this time the man started to show her true colors and he started to be uh, this dominating this domineering and uh, stopped wife of bath from uh, doing anything he wants when anything she wants by god he hit me on the ear one day because i tore out of his books a leaf so that from this my ear is grown quite deaf so not only dominating not only stopping uh, her his wife from doing anything she wants uh, he was also violent and uh, abused wife of bath uh, physically because uh, she says that jenkin hit me so hard on my ear one day that i permanently became deaf in that year so so again this theme of uh, domestic violence recurs in wife of bath in this section it has it has uh, we have come across this many times in the previous sections and uh, all this violence why because just uh, because she tore a page from his book and this book is also a uh, very a, a great example of the medieval misogyny and we'll study about that book in the later section but now we know that just because she tore a page from his book she, uh, he hit him so hard that she became deaf in one year stubborn i was as is a lioness and with my tongue very j i guess and walk i would as i had done before from house to house so wife of bath was also stubborn she was strong and stubborn and uh, the violence that that beating that night uh, that made her deaf didn't stop her from what she liked uh, she says that uh, i loved gossiping and she walked around from house to house uh, as she had done before so that beating uh, that violence that uh, jenkin caused upon her Uh, didn't stop her from doing what she wants and so in this section we also beside the domestic violence we also see wife of bath becoming a kind of a feminist resistance to that violent and dominating patriarchy and she doesn't wife of bath doesn't let jenkin have his way uh, in whatever he wants to do though i should not he swore Uh, for which he often times would sit and preach and read old roman tales to me and teach how one Sulp uh, salpicius gallus left his wife and her forsook for term all his life because he saw her with bad head i say looking out from his door upon a day so the first attempt of control uh, controlling the woman is violence that uh, jenkin caused and the next attempt when that violence doesn't didn't work and wife of bath was still uh, going out for gossip and still not listening to the husband the next attempt was uh, with tradition morality history and culture and we know that the roman culture was often glorified Uh, the roman civilization was uh, one of the greatest civilization and we know from here that even in the medieval ages uh, that roman uh, culture roman civilization was glorified that history was glorified and that history too had undertones of misogyny and patriarchal control and oppression of women because this uh, example of uh, salpius Gall gallus that uh, jenkin gives and she takes it as his backup of uh, arguing with wife of bath and jenkin tells uh, wife of bath that she uh, should not go for gossip and she began to uh, he began to sit and preach the roman tales of salpius gallus 
Now this person Salpius Gallus was a Roman general and he divorced his wife because one day he saw her leaving uh, the house without her veil without that headscarf that women are supposed to wear and married women in that culture uh, was supposed to cover their heads with veils and uh, that was a symbol of their modesty and chastity like we still have in many religion and cultures covering the women's head with uh, head and face with veils uh, so that was uh, still there uh, glorified in the medieval, medieval ages when Chaucer was writing so this wife of bath prologue and canterbury tales as a whole also becomes a cultural document of this period because of all these other things outside the main story and of course veil as you know that exists in many religion it is a symbol of patriarchal control and a kind of a sexual ownership of the women's bodies so as uh, this theme is also a recurrence because even in one of the previous uh, uh, in one of the previous sections we have read how uh, patriarchy and religion backs up each other trying to control women and women are at the crossroads with both the patriarchal uh, society and religion which backs it uh, each other so jenkin because uh, wife of bath was not listening to his orders and uh, not giving in to his control uh, now he was invoking all the roman tales of sulfius gallus and uh, whatever so what we learn from uh, this section this is rather a small section too what we learn from this section is that wife of bath's woe in marriage continues now this is her fifth marriage uh, the first three marriages were with old rich men whom he never loved and still he she had whom she never loved uh, still she had to go to bed with each of these husbands because that was the scheme that she gives uh, her body and in return they pass on their uh, wealth to her so like that the first three husbands were dead and then again the fourth husband uh, she kind of uh, loved the fourth husband but uh, there was no reciprocation from his part and instead uh, the fourth husband he kept a, uh, a mistress a prostitute and wife of bath was all too jealous because this fourth husband was sleeping around with other uh, women and then uh, she finally believed in jenkin and thought that this marriage will ultimately turn out to be good and jenkin is someone she truly loved because as she said that as an act of love i uh, right after marriage i transferred all my property in jenkin's name but jenkin turned out to be this violent uh, misogynist man uh, and so the woe in marriage that was the very first theme the, from which wife of bath started to tell her story that uh, i am going to tell a tale which uh, represents the woe the problems in the marriage and hearing that you will understand that marrying is not a very good idea so this was a, a theme one of the first section so that kind of recurs even when the fifth marriage of wife of bath doesn't quite work out and the marriage to jenkin which was kind of a uh, story in itself uh, her meeting uh, with jenkin when the fourth husband was still alive and uh, they are go they are going out together with the gossip mate alison during lent when the fourth husband was out of the town and uh, therefore there uh, therefore their kind of uh, pre marriage uh, and extramarital courtship and then again uh, her getting attracted to jenkin even during the moment of the fourth husband's funeral and getting married within one month but after all that the marriage to jenkin didn't turn out to be any fairy tale it was rather a very harsh in reality it was rather very harsh and violent and uh, doesn't work for wife of bath at all and this is kind of sad because this was the first time she actually uh, loved a man 
and the first time uh, she loved a man this man turned out to be a misogynist and a violent uh, kind of wife abuser because he hit him so hard that she became deaf so this is the section uh, we'll continue with the next again as usual